the Honourable Member for Etobicoke Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And, and just to the, the point of my, my colleagues uh, previous, my parents are immigrants here, and uh, they love this country because it was a strong democracy, and I've spent uh, 33 years in the Canadian forces ensuring that we had a strong democracy and, and, uh, and fighting for our rights. Um, and, uh, and I think uh, our government uh, demonstrates the fact that a strong, stable government has, uh, has a steady hand on the tiller, and that's why we're one of the greatest countries in the G7 right now, Mr. Speaker, in so many different ways, not just economically. Uh, the Speaker previous, I mean, he mentioned a few times in his speech about being baffled. Well, I would, I would respectfully submit, Mr. Speaker, that the New Democratic Party often is baffled. They don't understand why Canadians need such strong legislation and, and a budget implementation like this because Canadian families depend on, on tax savings. They depend on those monies to be reinvested in their families, reinvested from businesses into, into the economy creating a stronger economy overall because of that reinvestment and because this government, Mr. Speaker, facilitates that and allows Canadians to be able to, to do that. And ever since this government came into power in 2006, Mr. Speaker, it has been committed to ensuring economic growth and prosperity. And I'm very proud that this government has delivered with Canada emerging, as I said, as one of the top countries in the G7 with with, Mr. Speaker, 820,000 net new jobs have been created since 2009. Canada has had the best rate of job growth in the G7, and both the IMF and the OECD say so themselves. And their forecast says Canada will be at the head of the pack for economic growth in the G7 in the years ahead. Now, Mr. Speaker, all you have to do is go outside of this country to see what other nations are saying about Canada, and it is absolutely glowing. We are the envy of the world, and I wish, uh, I wish the New Democratic Party would, uh, would uh, uh, take a look at what the others in the world are saying, our peers on, in the global stage. The Jobs and Growth Act implements key initiatives from Economic Action Plan 2012, and it's going to ensure that our economic advantage remains strong today and into the long term. This act will help our families, as I said, and small businesses, consumers, seniors, students, manufacturers across Canada as well. This budget is going to provide tremendous opportunities for my constituents, Mr. Speaker, in Etobicoke Centre. As someone who, who, as I say, served as a reservist both full-time and part-time for 33 years, I know the extraordinary commitment that reservists make to keep Canadians safe. They can be called upon to serve abroad for extended periods, which can place significant financial strain on their employers, particularly small businesses. And they are very supportive of, of Canada's democracy and, and Canada's uh, foreign policy and, and the need to sometimes send reservist soldiers abroad. And so with the assistance, Mr. Speaker, from Canada Company, who has numbers well over 250 of our captains of industry in this country, and some of the same people that participate in True Patriot Love and similar, similar organizations, their motto is, by the way, many ways to serve, uh, builds the bridge between business and community leaders and the Canadian forces. And the government is working to ensure that our reservists remain gainfully employed and that members of our military receive the widest support care and recognition that they deserve, Mr. Speaker, right. for the important contributions that they have made and continue to make to the security of Canada. Here, here. Building on our government's commitment to support the men and women of our armed forces, Economic Action Plan 2012 commits to providing financial support to employers of reservists to offset such costs as the hiring and training of replacement workers or increasing overtime hours for existing employees. And Mr. Speaker, as a former commanding officer of a regiment, uh, and having worked with Canadian Forces Liaison Council and others, this is a huge initiative because this has always been the sticking point in allowing reservists to deploy overseas. This is going to make it so much easier for those employers to make that contribution to their country while maintaining their businesses, while giving that soldier an opportunity to, to serve his country in uniform. It is small businesses, Mr. Speaker, that provide gainful employment to our reservists and a wide variety of Canadians. They play a vital role in the economy and job creation, and our government is committed to, of course, helping them grow and succeed. The Economic Action Plan 2012 includes a number of key measures to support the growth of small businesses, such as the extending of the hiring credit for small business, which is, uh, businesses, which is a temporary credit of up to $1,000 against a small firm's increase in its 2011 employment insurance premiums over those paid in 2012. This temporary credit is going to help approximately 536,000 employers defray the, co defray the costs of additional hiring and reducing red tape. Many are familiar with the burdens of red tape and how it can negatively affect the business trying to grow. And by the way, that often affects nonprofit organizations as well. 
And our government is committed to reducing red tape by implementing a one-for-one -one rule and committing to develop a red tape reduction action plan to reduce unnecessary and ineffective regulations allowing small businesses to focus on growing and creating jobs. Other ways our government is reducing the administrative tax burden on small businesses are enhancing the Canada Revenue Agency's secure My Business Account portal. And that improves the business section on CRA's website, doubling the thresholds for eligibility to use the GST HST streamlined accounting methods and enhancing the predictability of the scientific research and experimental development tax incentive program and providing written responses to business inquiries by the CRA. These important measures all build on top of our government's significant action to reduce taxation for small businesses since 2006. So, for example, we provided $20 million to support the Canadian Youth Business Foundation's activities. The foundation works with young entrepreneurs to help them become the business leaders of tomorrow through mentorship, learning resources, and startup financing. We extended the accelerated capital cost allowance for, for manufacturing, processing machinery, and equipment to help manufacturers and processors make new investments in manufacturing and processing machinery and equipment. And we increased the small business limit to $500,000. This refers to the amount of income earned by small business, businesses sorry, eligible for a reduced federal tax rate. We reduced the small business tax rate from 12% to 11%. And we lowered the federal corporate income tax rate to 15% to help create jobs and economic growth for Canadian families and communities. We increased the lifetime capital gains exemption, which allows capital gains on qualifying small business shares to be realized tax-free from $500,000 to $750,000. The first time it's been increased since 1988, Mr. Speaker. It's incredible. Our government also released a code of conduct for the credit and debit card industry of Canada to protect small businesses. This was heralded by the Canadian Federation of Independent Business, who I quote as saying, merchants have new powers under the code that have helped them achieve tangible results in their dealings with the industry. This simply would not have happened without the code. A code, sorry, unquote. And our students, as important as small businesses are to our economy, students represent Canada's future. I think all, all parties here can agree to that. Our government has an impressive track record of supporting Canada's students and growing our labour force. We have invested more than $10 billion annually in students and education, including more than $3 billion in transfers to provinces for post-secondary education and over $7 billion in direct support to students and their families as well. We have established the Canada Student Grant Program, which is providing up to $250 per month of study to low-income students and up to $100 per month to middle-income students. Fantastic. We've created a new textbook tax credit with the help of cost of textbook, textbooks for students. And $342 million a year is provided for the Youth Employment Strategy to give young Canadians much-needed support as they pursue an education and careers, Mr. Speaker. Now, apprenticeships have the potential to create a wealth of new talent in this country. Our government realizes the importance of practical hands-on experience. It is why we have provided $140 million per year to encourage more young Canadians to pursue apprenticeships, including the new apprenticeship incentive grant and the apprenticeship completion grant. We have created the new apprenticeship job creation tax credit to encourage employers to hire new apprentices. Our Conservative government's major new investments have already helped better prepare Canada's students for the opportunities and jobs ahead. But we continue to expand on past initiatives and measures to provide students even more opportunities. We are ensuring that students are even better equipped and better integrated into the workforce by increasing support for youth employment opportunities with an additional $50 million to the youth employment strategy. We are doubling graduate internships in innovative firms with an additional $14 million for the Industrial Research and Development Internship Program to place even more students into practical hands-on research internships in Canadian companies. And, you know, Mr. Speaker, this takes us to the fast and flexible economic immigration system. You know, it's, a, it's an important component of our economy, our immigrants. And many immigrants chose to settle in, down in my riding of Etobicoke Centre, as my, my parents chose to settle in Toronto. They are hardworking and eager to contribute to our economy. However, we need a fast and flexible one-minute immigration system. Our government has placed a top priority in attracting immigrants who have the skills and experience our economy needs. And the Economic Action Plan will enable them to transition to an increasingly fast and flexible economic immigration system. In the future, our government will explore with provinces, territories, and employers 
approaches to developing a pool of skilled workers who are ready to begin employment in Canada. And as well, the federal skilled worker point system will be reformed to reflect the importance of younger immigrants with Canadian work experience and better language skills. Canada's immigration system supports a vibrant workforce by attracting skilled workers who will contribute to the growth of our economy. And Mr. Speaker, I encourage the opposition to get behind this bill and support Canada's economic growth and prosperity because of that. All the things I've just laid out, Mr. Speaker, is why Canadians need to support this bill, why the opposition needs to support this bill, and that's why, Mr. Speaker, they claim to be baffled. Thank you. Here, 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 here. Uh, question and comment, Honorable Deputy de Rimouski, Nishet Temesquet, Les Basques. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Ma question va être quand même relativement courte, euh, suivant le discours de mon collègue de, de Toby Coke Centre. Euh, J'aimerais lui suggérer peut-être de commencer à corriger les talking points qu'il utilise pour son discours. Entre autres, il parle du fait que euh, le Fonds monétaire international et l'OCDE reconnaît la bonne performance du gouvernement. Euh, J'aimerais savoir s'il a vu le rapport du Fonds monétaire international tout récemment qui mentionnait que euh, sur les 30 pays de l'OCDE, en termes de croissance économique, en 2012-2013, le Canada se classera 12e et que non seulement la situation n'ira pas en s'améliorant, mais elle ira en, euh, en, en se détériorant, puisque d'ici 2016-2017, en raison des mesures qui ont été prises par le gouvernement conservateur, et en particulier les mesures d'austérité, dans un temps d'incertitude économique, il est prévu que le Canada tombe en 17e place de de, de, des pays de l'OCDE, des 30 pays de l'OCDE, d'ici 2016. Alors, voyant ces chiffres-là et voyant les talking points qui nous ont été sortis cet après-midi, j'aimerais savoir ce que mon collègue Toby Coxamp pense de ce rapport du FMI qui semble contrecarrer euh, ce qu'il a avancé euh, plus tôt dans son discours. The Honourable Member for Etobicoke Centre. Well, Mr. Speaker, you know, I, I reject the premise of, uh, of what uh, the, the, uh, the Honourable Member is saying because many reports, the IMF and others across uh, this world, have touted Canada, its economic performance, its G7 performance. Even the Bank of England has now taken our bank governor to, to assist them in their troubles, Mr. Speaker, and that's, uh, that's uh, speaking significantly about Canada's prowess in the economic world and what we're doing with our economy and our country. So, Mr. Speaker, we are one of the best G7 countries in the world. There are many reports, many bodies, many countries, and others, including the G20 and G7 themselves, that lay that out. Thank you. Questions and comments? Honourable Member for Mark, Markham Unionville. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. As the member should know, there's the Conservative so-called hiring credit will actually punish small businesses if they either hire new employees or pay higher wages to existing employees. In fact, uh, Companies that uh, qualified in 2011, but then grew too big to qualify in 2012, could face an EI premium hike as much as 14 cents. This is eminently fixable. We Liberals proposed an amendment that would have fixed it in the Finance Committee, and we were also supported by CFIB, Canadian Foundation for Independent Business. So my question to the Conservatives is why are they forcing EI premium hikes on small Canadian businesses? Uh, the Honourable Member for Etobicoke Centre. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the, the, the Honourable Member you know, highlights why there's so few members of his party in that corner. Because you know, the amendments that they tried to introduce tried to derail the system. They tried to, uh, through, through that effort to derail the process, uh, tried to cripple Canadians in their ability to save taxes and, and earn and, and contribute to their families, contribute to their small businesses, contribute. Uh, to the EI program, and, uh, and that's why, Mr. Speaker, that the Liberal Party of Canada is, does not understand what Economic Action Plan 2012 is all about. Questions and comments? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of National Defence. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I share the Honourable Member's frustration with the two opposition parties who are not only embracing the wrong policies, or indeed, in the case of the party in the corner, no policy at all, but talking down the reality of the Canadian economy, an economy that's creating jobs well ahead of the pace of any other uh, advanced economy uh, that has put up more growth, better growth numbers than any, con than any country in Europe, uh, including Germany, uh, since uh, the start of this recession, indeed since the start of this government. Uh, but my puzzlement uh, is, is unassuaged, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to ask the member for Etobicoke Centre what his interpretation uh, is of the NDP's inability to talk about the facts of their platform from 2011. We campaigned on a platform of jobs and growth. We're delivering it now. They campaigned on a platform of a $21 billion ta uh, carbon tax. For some reason today, they're not prepared to talk about it. Why is that? 
The Honourable Member for Etobicoke Centre. Well, I'd like to thank the Honourable Member, Mr. Speaker, for his question. Um, I serve with the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary on uh, Defence Committee, and, uh, and he has done a brilliant job in that capacity. Um, the, uh, and, I, and I also share his frustration because, you know, the, the New Democratic Party did campaign on a $21 billion carbon tax. A, and, and this is what would put Canadians out of business. This is what would create hardships on all the people I talked about just now, Mr. Speaker. It'd create hardships on families, on students, on reservists uh, trying to get out and deploy into the world and others, and, and only would burden the rest of the country, driving us down further into economic crisis. That $21 billion carbon tax will drive us into that crisis, Mr. Speaker, and, and, I, and I share the Honourable Member's views that the, the, the party in the corner has, is, has no policies at all.